our great creator God has given animals all the characteristics that they need to get their food. And it's interesting that man-made tools often model some of the characteristics that animals have. Today, you are going to do an activity where you're going to be using tools that work very much the same way as a bird's beak does. I have some foods here that you are going to try to get with your tools. Let me show you what I have. Now, I've got some raisins in some water. I've got some candy worms in my oatmeal, several candy worms that are hidden in my oatmeal, and I've got some peanuts, and I've got some rice on a piece of bark. Now each of these foods represents a food that birds might eat. It's not necessarily the food that a bird would eat, but it represents something that a bird would eat. First, this water that has raisins in it. What kind of food do you think the raisins would represent? Maybe insects. Sometimes an insect looks, looks like a raisin or a raisin looks like an insect. Maybe insects or maybe some very small fish or even very small animals in the water. What about this oatmeal with the worms in it? What kind of food do you think that the worms, these candy worms represent? Of course, they represent worms that uh, a bird might look for in the ground. And I have a pan with some peanuts in it. What do you think the peanuts might represent? Maybe some nuts and some seeds that could be found um, in the woods and other places. And what about my piece of bark with rice on it? What kind of food do you think this might represent? Maybe very small insects in the tree, or insects uh, between rocks, or even in other hard places to, to reach. So these are the types of materials that you are going to be moving with the tools. But before you get started with this experiment, with this activity, I want you to do some reading. And this is going to help to give you a big idea of what we'll be doing today. Now it's important to learn to communicate what you're finding and learning as you do your science activities and experiments. And communicating just means that you are talking and sharing with other people. And you're going to do that first by writing some things down what you're finding out. First of all, what types of information do you need to communicate today in today's activity? You're going to communicate, or, or let's say write down so someone else can read it and learn about it. You're going to communicate how much food was collected with each tool. So look at your activity manual page, and you see we've got our purpose here, and we have listed the materials that you're going to need in your procedure. That's what you're going to do, and this is where you're going to communicate what you find you are going to write down the amount of food that you are able to move with each tool. Now, why do you think the information is recorded on a chart like this? It's just a good organized way to keep the information or the data together. So it's going to make it easier for someone else to find out what you learned and to learn that information and maybe to even add to it as they learn things. So be careful as you work and record carefully so that you and other people will be able to use the information that you get and other people get to communicate accurately. So what are you actually going to do? You are going to use each tool. And let me show you the names of those tools again. You're going to use your pliers, the needle nose pliers, chopsticks, and tweezers to move each one of the foods that I showed you into a cup for 30 seconds. 
So you're going to need someone to time you to do this. Um, you're going to need a partner to give you 30 seconds as you move each food with each tool. So you are going to move the, the gummy worms into a cup first for 30 seconds using the pliers, then for 30 seconds using the needle nose pliers, then for 30 seconds using the chopsticks, and finally for 30 seconds using the tweezers. You're going to repeat that same procedure, moving the peanuts into an empty cup with each of the tools, 30 seconds apiece, and then the raisins. You're going to have to get the raisins out of the jar with each one of the tools for 30 seconds. And last, getting the rice off the bark. So it's going to take just a little bit of time to do this, and you do need a partner to help to time you. Now, as you are being timed, after you are finished and you're being timed, you are going to then count and record on your chart the amount of food that you were able to collect, the actual pieces of food that you were able to collect. First, the gummy worms. How many gummy worms with the pliers? How many gummy worms with the needle nose pliers, with the chopsticks, and with the tweezers? So you can be filling in your chart as you are going along. Don't try to remember. Write your the number of pieces of food that you collect right as you go along. Now, to give you a better idea of what you will be doing, I want you to watch.
Now we're going to look at your activity manual page 11 again and you're going to be completing this chart as you work and there are some questions for you to answer as you conclude your work. Which food was your tool able to gather the most of? Which was the best tool to gather for each food? And you are going to use what to remember the answer to that? Right, you're going to use the information on your chart. And I also want you to turn the page over. We're going to look at this page together and start it together. There are some little pictures of different kinds of birds and beaks. And we're going to read uh, a few of these and decide which tool would work best or work the most like that bird's beak. For example, this first one says, a heron uses its beak to grasp fish in the water. It looks like that, and if it grasps fish in the water, which tool of the tools that we've been discussing would that beak be like? Well, maybe the needle nose pliers. Or what else could help grasp? Maybe the chopsticks. A woodpecker pecks holes in trees and other pieces of wood. It uses its beak to grasp buried insects. So its beak is like, I think it could also work like the needle nose pliers. And also maybe tweezers. Let's do one more together. The cardinal uses its beak to crack seeds. So its beak would be like what? Pliers. Have you ever cracked a nut with a pair of pliers? I've cracked lots of nuts with pairs of pliers. Now this is just for fun, but I want you to complete this as well. Complete the last three blanks on that page. So you're going to do the activity. You're going to complete this activity manual page and the, and the front one as well. And I hope you enjoy finding out which tool works best.